In the previous video, we had a look at capacitors in DC circuits. Let's now have a look at them in AC. Suppose we apply a sine wave to a capacitor as shown in the diagram. Initially, the voltage starts at zero, but then increases rapidly. And as before, this results in voltage building up in the capacitor plates as it charges up. And similarly, as in the pattern we saw previously, this results in a high current. The difference this time is that because the applied voltage is AC, the capacitor charges up and then discharges as the voltage rises and falls, and the current follows it in a familiar pattern just behind the voltage. In fact, if you look at the pattern over time, you'll see that the voltage is a sine wave and the current is a cosine wave. If you look back to our video on phase, you'll see that this means that the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. This is an important universal point and it is an important difference between capacitors and resistors, where as you might remember, the voltage and the current were both in phase. If you look at the diagram, you'll see actually that I is highest when V is changing fastest. That is when the rate of change of V is greatest. If you know a bit about calculus, you'll know that this could be written as that the current varies as dV by dt. In fact, it turns out that the constant of proportionality in this formula is C, the capacitance. And so I is equal to C dV by dt. Now, if V is a sine wave, as shown in the previous diagram, then I is equal to C dV by dt V sine omega t. And differentiating the sine wave, we get that I is equal to C omega V cos omega t. So we've just proved mathematically what we worked out from common sense using a diagram. The relationship between I and V is sometimes presented on a diagram called a phasor diagram, which shows the magnitude of I and V and the angle between them. Now, a very important point comes from this. Since I is at its largest when V is changing most quickly, if we increase the frequency of a signal, I becomes larger because at higher frequencies, the voltage changes more quickly. This is illustrated in the diagram. So a capacitor opposes the flow of current less and less at higher frequencies. This is a little bit like saying that it has a lower resistance at higher frequencies but not quite, for reasons which will become clearer a little later. We can see this trend from the equation we derived earlier, that I is equal to C omega V cos omega T. Let's say that we just want the peak values of I and V, so we'll remove the varying part, the cos omega T. This leaves us with I equals C omega V. We can rearrange this to give us a formula that V over I which is a bit like resistance, is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. Now, there are two very important points why, although this looks like resistance, it is not resistance. Firstly, V and I are out of phase, as explained earlier. And secondly, a resistor opposes current by dissipating electrical energy as heat. It gets hotter. However, a capacitor does it by charging up and then returning its charge or energy back to the source. So it doesn't get hot and it doesn't waste energy by dissipating it as heat. Because of these two important differences, this opposition to current is not called resistance. Instead, it has its own special name, reactance, and it's given the symbol X. However, in other respects, it does parallel resistance, for example, because the current is equal to V over X in the same way as current in a resistor is V over R. However, the really important point is for the reasons we discussed earlier, reactance decreases with frequency. So
So here we have the most important purpose of a capacitor in electronic circuits. Capacitors block low frequencies but let high frequencies pass through. You can see this from common sense because if we connect a battery to a capacitor DC, it's just a break in the circuit. Obviously, it will completely block the flow of current after, of course, the capacitor has charged up. And this leads us to the purposes of capacitors in AC circuits. And there are three main ones. Firstly, they can block out DC, for example, from power supplies, and isolate one part of the circuit from another by not allowing the DC to flow through, but allowing the AC or signal to flow through. Secondly, they can filter out high frequencies or interference by directing them to ground. And thirdly, because I and V are out of phase, they can induce phase shifts in signals. We'll discuss this more later as this is a slightly more complex application of them.